What's up everyone, welcome back for another video. If you are not subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, you're awesome, thank you. Let's get into the video today, which is, I guess, a somewhat long-term review of my 2020 Colorado ZR2. Now this isn't gonna be a review in the sense of car reviews, it's just gonna be kind of my experience with this truck over the past two years, um, a little over two years, and 43, almost 44,000 miles at this point. If you're brand new here and just joined us for this specific video, I do make a bunch of car content, mainly focused around this this truck, the ZR2. I do have a Wrangler also that we just bought and a 190E Mercedes-Benz that will eventually be getting a motor swap that I have to kick it into gear and actually start working on that, but join along. So what better place to do this little video than, than actually in the truck driving around Got to run some errands today, so I figured I'd take you guys along with me while we do this. Not sure how much we're actually going to get done today, but I'm going to attempt to get some stuff done. So let's get into my two-year, slightly over two-year experience with this Chevy Colorado ZR2. When we bought this truck, we lived in New York. We got it in February of 2020. We were considering getting a Bison, which is, if you're not too familiar, it's kind of like the same truck with kind of like a couple upgraded feature of the features on it like different bumpers and fender flare things and just stuff like that it's it's kind of more of an appearance package they basically are the same exact truck just a couple upgrades we decided we were gonna save the money on the front end because we most likely were gonna modify the truck anyway I actually prefer the look of this front end as opposed to the bison but the bison has a cooler back bumper stuff like that no big deal Went with this truck, no regrets. By the way, if there's any wind noise I can't hear right now, um, I'm sorry for that. It's 94 degrees out and I have the air conditioner on because I don't feel like dying. But let's get into it, which would be the first thing would be reliability, which I guess is the main focus of why people buy vehicles because they want it to be reliable. So is this truck reliable? Yes, haven't had any issues. May, well, any issues with the engine and those components. The only issues I've had were with components that I changed. So I went through a couple upper control arms. Um, actually, the ones I'm running right now are the best ones yet because of my shock situation. I have the King's extended travel shocks and these upper control arms, the CWF control arms work uh, best in conjunction with the extended travel. But uh, the only issues I've had with the truck would be something like that, getting like a, a clunking noise because I lifted the truck with stock upper control arms, then tearing CV boots. So the CV boots is something, it's a very common thing with these trucks and it seems to, well it's common, people have done it on stock suspension but once you lift the truck, you're like, you're pretty much guaranteed that you will at some point tear your CV boots. At one point, I had a rear Adelief leaf on and I raised the front up enough just to be level. Didn't do any off-roading and tore both inside CV boots. So it's just something that will happen. These CV boots are made out of like paper mache or something and they just are horrible. But other than that, engine-wise, no issues at all. Um, some people get a transmission shutter. Uh, I haven't had any issues. I have the V6 model and I haven't had any issues engine wise or transmission wise or anything like that. So um, reliability, it's up there. This thing has taken us across country, I guess twice, because we went there and back. I guess you would consider that twice. So didn't have one hiccup, did an oil change beforehand, did an oil change after, and it's been running flawless, no, no issues. All right, so let's talk gas mileage now because um, with today's gas prices, that should be a somewhat of a, it, you should be thinking about that a little bit in the back of your mind because it costs money to go places and gas is very expensive. So I don't remember the last time I reset the fuel average gauge thing in this truck, but I have it set for a 450 mile, I guess average. And the best I've gotten was 18.8 miles per gallon. Right now, my average is 16.3. Um, to be honest, I'm not completely sure if that's just for this trip, that average, but best is 18.8, .8, which is okay. I mean, it is a V6, so it should be getting a little bit better gas mileage, but I do have bigger wheels and tires on it. It is 
I guess it's leveled the front it's not a complete lift but the front is lifted a little bit I'm curious to see how the gas mileage would be affected if I put the bed rack back on because then I wouldn't have the bed cover on and there would be a little bit extra weight in the back curious to see how that would work but um, gas mileage is okay but not the greatest and for reference on the gas mileage we did have a Mustang GT which has the V8 if you're not familiar with that it's a five a five liter V8 as opposed to this is a 3.6, and we actually got better gas mileage in the Mustang. I think we were in like the 20s for average. So, um, I know you're dragging around less weight, but it's more cylinders, so I don't know. To me, it, it this should have a little bit better gas mileage, in my opinion. Now, let's talk about the suspension, which is one of the main things that makes the ZR2 a ZR2 as opposed to like the Z71. Obviously front and rear lockers also, which add to it. And I believe it's two inches, it's lifted two inches as compared to the um, all the other models of the Colorado, but let's get to the suspension. So this comes with the Multimatic DSSV suspension front and rear, which it was pretty good up until it wasn't. Uh, let's go over the front first, which was something that I bought a lift kit for the front just to level it out, because I'm not looking to raise the truck, mainly just level it out so it doesn't have that raked look. And I went with the Peak Suspension Coilover Kit, which you change the spring and it has an adjustment collar that goes on the shock. When you turn the, the collar, you're actually, you're actually adding more preload to the spring, which is holding the front end up. So I guess your spring rate changes. I don't remember how the truck drove that much before that, because I did that pretty early on from when I got the truck. And by the way, I have install video on that and the new suspension. If you want to check that out, I'll link that. But the, the lift kit was cool, it was working, and then eventually my shock started leaking. The passenger side shock started leaking, which is a pretty common thing with these trucks. So people on stock suspension and people on upgraded, lifted, whatever suspension, all have had leaking shocks. I feel like I've seen the people have issues with the rears more than the fronts, but my front leaked. Could it have been like I did the install a little wrong? Yes but at the same time, people leak on stock suspension. So I don't know what it was, maybe I got a bad one, maybe I messed it up. But that's something to think of with these trucks and also those the shocks are not rebuildable. So once it leaks, that's it, you can't do anything about it. You can get, I forget how much a shock is from like the dealer or from straight from GM, but you can get from like websites like Rock Auto, which I believe is the same exact shock, for a lot cheaper, something to think about. But who doesn't like upgrades? I had the King's extended travel shocks on the front. I didn't get the com compression adjusters because I don't know why. I should have did that. I got lucky with the King's because it only took me, uh, it only took a couple months to get. I know right now they're back ordered over a year if you want a set of those. So you can get lucky with someone with one of the, like, the websites selling ones, or if you look on the Facebook groups, there's a couple people selling them here and there. Um, they get scooped up pretty quick, so I mean, if you keep an eye out, there's other companies, Radflow and ADS are also making shocks for this truck. Keep it, you can keep an eye out for those if you were considering going that route, but um, the stock suspension, good, till it's not. Now the interior of this thing uh, looks the same as the day we got it, really. The leather seats held up pretty good. If there is anywhere, it's very minimal. One thing I think I do prefer, we used to have a Z71 Colorado before this, and it had like a cloth insert on the center section, and I kind of like that better. It gave a little bit more texture, a little more contrast to the interior, and I feel like it gripped you a little bit better. But these leather seats held up perfectly. Um, we've spilled food and like soup and stuff in here, and it cleans up pretty easily. No wear. Pretty good for my standards, I would say especially with having the dog in here all the time and whatnot. Um, interior looks brand new. Now, in efforts to keep this video as short as sweet as possible, is this truck worth it? Or do I think this truck was worth it? So short answer, yes. Long answer is a little bit different. So someone like me, I usually like this sporty, the sporty slash like top of the line model of whatever I'm looking at. So for the sake of this truck, it would be the ZR2 as opposed to the Z71, which would kind of be like the top of the line of the Colorado before you get to ZR2 level. So for me, it was kind of like I had to get the ZR2 because I wouldn't be 100% happy without the ZR2. 
Now, also, for someone like me, who doesn't use this truck to its full potential, and I don't know if I ever honestly will, because I'm not a hardcore off-roader. Um, I do, the stuff I prefer is kind of like smooth-ish dirt roads that I could just drive fast on, well, relative faster on, and I enjoy that more than rock crawling. So, um, you don't necessarily need a ZR2 for that. Also, the lower, the lower towing capacity, which I've towed when I had my Nissan 240, I towed that to the track with this truck, had no issues with it. Um, I think the main reason they tell you about towing is maybe transmission cooling uh, for these trucks and not so much for the suspension. That's something to think about. If you can be honest with yourself about what you're actually gonna use the vehicle for, then you could tell yourself or you could figure out if the truck's actually worth it for you. For me, yes, it was worth it for me and I have no regrets about it. Now, would I like another truck? Yeah. I have high hopes for the Ranger Raptor, to be honest. Um, and the new ZR2, uh, I'm not too hyped about it, but we'll see how it is when they finally release it. I think it was like July 28th or something they were gonna release, like do the full reveal. We'll, we'll see how that is. But uh, also, am I gonna get a new truck? No, because the way, the way the market is right now, it is completely ridiculous. You know, every single dealership has every single vehicle marked up, which is mainly a reason that manufacturers should just do away with dealerships. Happy with this purchase, no regrets. So I will see you guys on the next one. If you have any questions about it, anything that I didn't touch on that you kind of are curious about, leave your questions down below. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more content in the future about this truck and other projects we have going on. And hit that like button. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace out, do off-road things.